Hello everybody, I'm here today with Grandmaster Avatik Gregorian who is a very strong chess player of Armenia. He is also sitting here today as one of the main sponsors of the event being held at Zakazor. Uh, Zakazor, yes, thank you so much. I am hoping I will remember how to say this by the end of the event, Avatik. It's very tough to do. <laughs> so, the name of the uh, tournament is Chess Mood and uh, Avatik is the founder of Chess Mood. So Avatik, uh, before we get to that, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your early journey as a chess player and how you got to become a grandmaster? Oh, well, it was, it was a quite long journey. I started when I was four. So it was during the war. We had some war with Azerbaijan and my father is a doctor. He went for the war and we were left uh, with family here. It was tough times. We didn't have electricity, water. It was very tough times. I was four, my young sister was two, and I was getting bored because there is no electricity. That times there were not smartphones. It's tough to make fun for a four year old kid. And my grandfather said, okay, let's go. I will teach you chess. So she taught me chess. I learned chess somehow. I don't know how, but I started to beat my grandmother at four. And then my father, um, my, my grandmother immediately taught me how to play backgammon. <laughs> and then I, I started to play with her more backgammon. But when my father came back from the war, I was already six. So he took me to chess school. Like, first of all, we played and I said, OK, this kid uh, plays chess. And my father always loved chess very much. And now he's a strong amateur. He has around 2400 on chess.com, just for information. Wow. So he took me to chess school. I think basically said when it started and the first tournament I played, the first game I played probably it was the very important one because if not that game, I might not be here because that game I lost. Oh. It was the first round I lost. If I won that game, maybe it, I would get ah, it's nothing. But I lost that game and probably might be for many. It's like, okay, it's like chess I don't want, yeah? But that made me so angry. Who is this guy who beat me? And I said, okay. And after the tournament, I started to, to train and I asked my father, come and play with me. And then it goes, you play the Armenian championship. Oh, I'm number three. Hmm. Next year I should win. And then you train more. And then the next year you are again number three. Hmm. Next year I should win. And so, and then it goes. Then, oh, who are these guys who are international master? I also want to be international master. And then you get international master. GM? Why not? Let's do GM. And then the journey goes. So I played professional chess until I was mm, 22. And but it, it was about there when I was on peak of my writing. Uh, and just I, I decided to retire and switch to chess coaching. And then the journey continued until I'm here now. So, you know, um the one thing that I uh, that really struck me when I was reading up about you is you got you went from becoming an international master to a grandmaster in one year. Yeah. And that was really hard in those days. So how did you do that? Like, you know, uh, make it to become a grandmaster in such a short span of time. Like how many tournaments did you play to, to get your norms? Well, like really, maybe right now it's not as tough doing it in one year. There are so many tournaments and this, uh, so many resources to learn. At that time it was really tough, but um, I really believe like till now my philosophy is uh, probably the people who read our articles might know it. It's why. Like, you should answer the question why. Why you do that? Because many people will say, I want to become a GM, I want to do this. And when you ask them why you want to become a GM, they say, it's cool or I want it, I don't know, in some uh, vague answer. So if you have a strong why, just figure it out ways how to do that. And probably I had, I had a strong why in a few short words. Um, my sister was about to go to the university and she wanted to become a doctor. And to become a doctor in Armenia is not cheap. And I understood that my father is going to have problems. So I said, okay, let's try to help as much as possible. And if you're a GM, at that time, you are getting some salary from the federation, you play tournaments, you make more money, of course. I said, okay, let's do it in one year. And I said, how to do it in one year? Because I, 
myself, I didn't have money. My father, I could not ask her for support. I should do it somehow myself. So the problem was whenever I go to some tournament, I should win. I have no other chance. I have no second chance. I go to a tournament, I should win it. So I make some money so I can travel to the next one. I win it. So that was the plan. And for it, I was I started to train like crazy. Uh, I was waking up very early and working eight hours each day. And then it was, uh, I, I, at some point I realized I need to have a coach. And when I was approaching coaches, everyone was saying, well, I think you can become a GM, but it's tough. Uh, it's not easy. It's not easy to do in one year, but I can help you. I said, no, thank you. If you don't believe I can do it in one year, no. I need someone who will believe in my dream. And then it was, it was time when Arthur Chibokshan, at the time he was an IM, he worked with me some time and said, you can do that. And I said, join me, I want to do that. He joined me and with his help, somehow, I don't know how, in one year I met this GM. Funny part was, uh, because I was IM, my coach was also IM, we were working very hard, so he was coming to my place. From morning where we were working, we were having some lunch, we were continuing to work. At that time, of course, he also become better and we both <laughs> become GMs. Together. <laughs> No, not almost the same time. I did it uh, faster. faster Maybe than him. my Y was stronger than his, but he also became a, a GM. So yeah, it's like I had strong Y, that strong desire. I know why I need to become a GM, mm. and I figured out ways how to do that. Just I started to work like crazy. I found a good coach who believed in this, and then everything went there. My, this is so inspirational. Seriously, to uh, tell people that there's you need to have a strong why and then you can achieve whatever you want is such a great message i would take seriously i think it's basically it's, it's everywhere whatever you want to do you want to become a cosmonaut you want to become a philanthropist whatever you want like why you do that because if that why it's strong your unconscious mind starts to figure it out for you yeah. you just sleep and your unconscious mind when you are sleeping uh it doesn't work and when you wake up it says oh call this person do this go there the event and then it goes. Right. If, it's, if it's weak, your unconscious mind doesn't help. Unconscious mind is such an inner uh, friend that we need to learn how to use it. Like, I didn't know much that time. It was after I retired. I started to learn about neuroscience and the other stuff. Like, I think it's, it would be much easier if I learned this stuff much earlier. Well, you're so lucky that you had such a strong mind and such a strong uh, why a vision that you could achieve what you wanted to there are a lot of people who go astray because they have the talents they have the backing but then they they don't know why they're doing what you're doing and then they start getting distracted so. exactly it's it's very easy to uh to resign to give up at some point because the same way if we speak about becoming a gm it's not easy because you are getting lots of punches to your mouth and each time it's very easy to fall down and don't look don't don't wake up, don't get up on your legs. You just said, okay, I don't want these punches again. I go to other thing, yeah. But if your why is strong, uh, you, it's not you who wake up. Your inner mind, your unconscious mind, it takes you and it wakes you up and then you continue. So this strong way helps mainly when you are going through tough moments, mm. tough tournaments, tough things. But if your why is strong, you don't give up because it just, it's not you, who, it's just your inner mind says, we don't give up now, we go on, we continue, so it goes. Right, right, really, very, very good story. So then as um, a player, you started transitioning into a coach, right? So how did that happen? Oh, well, uh, when I was playing, uh, that time I started to help a few people as a friend, and then I felt, oh, I enjoy this. And then I felt I enjoyed more uh, than I was uh, enjoying my playing. So I had some uh, whys why I wanted to become a GM. I had a why why I want to add some 2600. Main thing is my father's dream was something interesting. Like many parents say, if you ask them what is your dream, they will tell, I want my son or my daughter to become a world champion. My father was very realistic. And my father said, I want, I dream to see you playing in the national team of Armenia. That my mind. That was my father's uh, goal, and to play for national team, you need to play very strong. So that was my another wife said my father did so so much for me. Let let make him happy. Well, eventually I did it. Um, even 
uh, before the tournament, it was Armenian Championship. I don't know how, but uh, during the second round, I felt I'm going to win this. Some inner power was there, and I said, Father, if I win this tournament, what would you do for me? He said, what do you want? I hated when my father was smoking. And I said, Father, you will stop smoking? He said, yes. I asked everyone, my friends, like, what will you do? Everyone, like, oh, you are the eighth number by in the rating list out, out of 10 players, how you will win that, whatever you want. So I asked everyone something. And then I won the tournament. And my father was the first one who kept his word and he stopped smoking. So that time I won the championship. Uh, I was already playing good chess, so my rating also jumped to 2600. But then I didn't have other why, why I want to continue and become 2700 or somewhere there. And I started to enjoy coaching very much. And I said, oh, that's why I should be kind of egoistic and keep all my secrets for me. Don't give up my secrets, my novelties, how I trick uh, opponents in bad positions, how I prepare, because during the professional career, uh, you develop lots of techniques. I said, that's why I don't share with others. I started to enjoy it and then I made this decision because it's like most of us pursue, pursue their happiness. So I felt it will, be make, it will make me more happy. And then I s switched to coaching. That's that, uh, what happened. And mainly because I was working very hard, I developed many techniques for myself. So eventually kind of I had some talent to be a good coach and it worked for me. Yeah, yeah. And you know, you're such a positive person. You're such a good speaker. You can communicate. So it all went for you. And you have so many achievements as a coach as well. You were the coach, official coach of the, of the Thailand team, right? Yeah. Um, you've also coached some of our very strong grandmasters. SL Narayanan has been your uh, student. Uh, Prithu Gupta has become a yeah. grandmaster thanks to your coaching. So you've done great stuff for Indian chess as well. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, uh, I love overall to work with people who who are hard workers and they know why they want to do that. And I was kind of lucky because I didn't uh, need to do this coaching for making money. Somehow I wasn't making it anyway. So I was not picking anyone. I was picking the students. It was not them who are saying, okay, this coach or that one. Uh, I got, I was getting lots of offers and I was picking and I was picking the ones who, with whom I knew I will enjoy them. And then, then it's how it worked. Yeah. Yes. Cause if someone is coming and you just do it for money, it will not work. I was doing it because I wanted to do, and I picked them because I love their personalities. I love their, the chess skills. I knew we can make it and then it worked. That's great. You know, that's a very, that's very similar to how Sagar and Amrita uh, also used to pick their students. They always, uh, they never did it for the money and they only did it for the love of the game and the student. So they see if it's a good match. So very similar there. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so your life as a coach, you know, we talked about and then comes chess mood. Yeah. In 2018 around. Yeah. Uh, you gave birth to chess mood. So tell us what inspired you to do that? Oh, well, I was that time I was coach of national team of Thailand and I was having a kind of dream life. If I was when I was 10 years old and they said, what kind of life would you love to have? I think that was one of my dreams. Somehow I loved Asia. So I was living in the Asia. I was living next to the beach. It was also one of the dreams, I think, too, of many people. I had my bike and uh, I had everything I, I, I would love to have when I was kids, my freedom, everything. Um, so I was having a crazy nice life and looking back it was a tough decision to make because uh, how it's overall it happened. Um, when I was working with Thai Federation, I also started to meet some amateurs. And then when I saw what courses they are buying online, how they are spending money and how many companies are making crazy money selling, uh, let's say, not, not so great content, like, let's say that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it was uh, it's, it hurt me so much. And I said, uh, one day somebody will fix this. This cannot continue a long time. And one day I wake up at like, why somebody should fix and it's not me. 
Uh, and they said, well, maybe I can do that because I was a professional coach already for a long time. I was a player myself because the other guys who were making this, they were some business guy. Okay, how to make a course, not which will be the good content, but that can be sold. And yeah. eventually there was the material which was not very, which didn't have that good quality. And that's what there happened one day, a very funny thing, which made my decision like, okay, I go for it. A company, I will tell, not tell, them, tell which one, contacted me and said, mm, can you record for us the courses? And I said, okay, tell me more about it. It was the condition. And they offered the condition, uh, which was very funny. And I said, the amount you offer, I can make just coaching one hour. And for creating one hour material, I need to spend many hours for creating the material, to record, to edit this, this. What was the idea? And they told me, you don't care about this. You don't care about preparing. Just record and we sell. Ah, this is the way you do You don't care about the quality. You just record and we sell. And you are one of the biggest guys in the market. Right. Okay, fine. So I said, I, I, will, I will go for it. And then I was there and I started to hire people uh, to start with Chasmood. But I felt it's like I'm here next to the beach uh, under the coconut tree drinking cocktails yes. in the, some ananas. Uh, some <laughs> pineapple, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, pineapple. And I'm telling my staff what to do. No, like in, the, like in the movie, the king should go in the forward. So I came back to Armenia and we started. So it was, uh, looked like it was yesterday, but we went together like a Big journey. At first, it was very tough, very, very tough. I, I used to wake up um, at 4 a.m. every night, uh, working till 8 a.m. for making money, for paying for salaries. And then from 8 to 8 or 8 to 9, I was working to create the chess move. That time it was very tough. Now everything is easier because we made it profitable, so chess mode covers the expenses. Also, we recently got uh, investments. It's much easier. Before it was tough, like kind of I'm lucky we got here. Wow, this is uh, really amazing. And, uh, you know, this is all very hard to do, to manage being a coach, a player, then setting up, being an entrepreneur, always a tough journey because you're already making good money. As you said, you're lying down on the beach and having students come to you and learn from you. Um, I'm sure you must be having a very positive influence in your life. You know, maybe this is a good time to tell us about your wife, Annie. And was she there when you started Chess Mode? Oh, the story with my wife is very interesting because uh, Annie, at first, one of the Annie was one of the very first employees of Chess Mode. Oh. And how I found her, so there was an open position. Uh, I was looking for my assistant and kind of my right hand, whom I can trust, who will be very smart that I can just close my eyes and trust many tasks. And for that position, I interviewed lots of people for three months. Okay. And I was saying, no, 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 because uh, the standards were very high. And then I met Annie, like, she's smart, she can do that, and eventually I hired her. I hired her after uh, one month, I figured out it was a great decision I make. Then I figured out, no, he's not just a very smart girl doing her task very good. She's also a very nice person. And we became very good friends. So we were very, very good friends for one year. And then you know how it happens. Yeah, of uh, course. We were working together every day. Like, she was coming to our place at 8 a.m. Ah. And we were working till 9 p.m. every day. She was just going, sleeping, coming back. Uh, and then eventually we fell in love and then we married. Oh, what a cute story that <laughs> is. So she's been your right hand person through the journey of Chess Mood. So actually Chess Mood is just both your baby then. Like she's equally a part of Chess Mood and yeah, yeah, it's, right it's from almost, the beginning. It's, it's almost that way because yeah. I started Chess Mood and after a few months I hired her. So she was from the very beginning and till now she is my right hand. She's doing all the stuff with me. If I'm not sleeping, she's not sleeping. So we are working all day, every day together, pushing it together. And really sometimes I'm looking and thinking how on earth people can start a company without having a people like Annie. Yeah. Because really I cannot imagine how I would do without her. She takes so much responsibilities. I'm like mainly doing the chess part. She's doing the any part that 
there is no need to just now let you take care of that part. So, so I, I get a great, great support from her. Oh, this is a really, really nice story about how the couple, the power couple, you can call them, yeah, that make something happen. And, you know, actually it takes so much effort and time to build your own company. And if you don't have a supportive spouse who's not part of the process, it's very hard to balance work and life, you know, personal life then starts getting affected. So this is great. Yeah, um, it's, it's absolutely, I, I, uh, it would be very tough. It's like I'm the founder of Chess Mood Imagine and my wife is uh, working at some other company yes, and yes, you would and, never see her. And, and she's not understanding why I'm coming late, why I'm having some problems, why I'm having these headaches, why I do this. And I don't understand why this, this, and it's, it's like really cool that yeah, we work together. Perfect. Yes, yes, absolutely. And by the way, we, we, we married on 1st of April, the full day. Oh! Uh, and nobody believed. <laughs> I, I post uh, on Facebook and I said, what a cool day to get married and then nobody will, will, will believe. And everybody laughed and like, good joke. Da, da, da. Oh, and they didn't wish you, yeah, I yeah, congratulate but, yeah, you. Yeah, but I was really, that day was, <laughs> <laughs> I was getting married that day. Wow. Because my friends, everyone knew that I was like, oh, marry marriage, I have chest mood, no way to do that. And suddenly I'm posting this and nobody believed. And it went even two years. I was, some of my relatives were, oh, you, you're married? Oh. <laughs> So, so that was that was serious. It's that Facebook status was serious. Yeah. yeah. Oh my I god, really that's married. so funny. <laughs> so um, I would think you know one thing. I have, while talking to you, I'm realizing you're such an energetic, lively person. You know, you have you give out such positive vibes. Where do you draw all this energy from? Oh, I think it's kind of inner happiness. I mean, uh, if you are living appropriate to your value hierarchies. You have a uh, life uh, which you would love to have or it's very, very similar. Uh, you have that energy anyway. Like, you know, if, if you speak to people and you know, okay, this is a big person, that one is no. So I think it's just from the inner happiness. This is the first thing. Uh, second, I think it's the people who are next to me because I was lucky all my life. I didn't have to deal with people with whom I don't want. Hmm. This was after the school. I mean, during the school, I had schoolmates whom I didn't want to see. Correct. But after that, all my life, it was, I was working on chess with people whom I want. I was having coaches whom I loved. I started chess mode. Uh, I was, uh, I, I was, I'm hiring people whom I love. Yeah. When I was coaching, I didn't have to do coaching for making money and pick up students whom I don't like. Hmm. So all the time I picked people whom I love and I love the quote very much. You are, we are the average of the five, five people we spend time most. Yes. So here I'm very accurate and I don't spend the energy with people that I think it's better I spend that energy and my time with more closer people to me. And also, um, one of the secrets I think of that is having that feeling of the gratitude because uh, very often we have so much things in our lives but we don't appreciate and we feel unhappy that if someone who is in the jail without sin, he would just, they would just laugh on us that we have this everything, homes, we don't need to care about food, we don't need to care about our safety, but we feel unhappy, that person in the jail would laugh at us. So I'm sometimes seeing that person like, oh, so much things we have in our lives that we often don't appreciate. So one of the rituals I have, it's every night before sleeping, I deeply, not just say, but feel the gratitude to this, 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 whatever I have, and the same thing I do in, uh, in the morning. And... Um, one day I was, I was reading a book, very good book, very good business book. It calls uh, Delivering a Happiness by Tony, Tony I cannot uh, pronounce his surname, Hishek or something like that. Okay. A great, great book. And at the end, the author says, we do all this stuff trying to get this, that, 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 that. Why? And often we will ask probably because we want to, we would, we would do that so we become happy. And then I ask the question, why we don't start from the end? What makes people happy? 
because often we are trying to, if I do that, I will be happy. We are getting there. Where is our happiness? Just one day. The other morning, we are again not happy. So right. why not to start at the end? And then there are, like, there are lots of good books about how to pursue happiness and what is happiness. And really, there is this kind of science. What is it to, be, to feel happy? And I like highly encourage uh, people who are listening, uh, if they are interested to go to chessmood.com and see what is there, fine, do that. The second thing I would recommend to do, just put in the, type in the Google books about happiness. There are lots of ones. I didn't read all of them. If I did, if I read all of them, I would say I recommend that one. Yeah. I have read a few ones, so maybe there are better ones, so better you make, you can do that research. But that, that is that worth it because often, uh, we think that, okay, if I do this, 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 after 10 years, I will become happy. Often you will just read one thing, you will learn what it takes. And then, oh, it took just one month having the same life, just you are now happy. Wow. So this is, I think, that's it. It's just inner happiness. If you are not inner happy and you have like good energy, then maybe you are a good actor. <laughs> Wow. Otherwise, it should be it should it, be natural. It's pure. It has to be yes. pure happiness. Like one, whether whether it like it's uh, that that is it, or you are a great actor, you should be in Hollywood. <laughs> so you know, Avatik, you have a second career waiting for you. You can actually be a motivational speaker and a coach. You know, <laughs> seriously, because nowadays there are so many people running after money, fame. That's what they think is going to lead them to happiness. And like you said, you achieve one thing and then you're like happy for like a day and then you move on saying what next. So they're never happy. They're never satisfied because you're always looking for the next thing. And, you know, I think you can really help a lot of people with all this knowledge that you have. It's great. Well, thank you very much for that words. Uh, if, even if I'm good at that, there are people who are much better than me and who are really uh, in that professionally for many years we just need to follow them we just need to find them uh, follow them listen to their advice personally i i uh, whenever i go to gym i need to run there or do something i always put in my ears my um, a podcast or yeah something. yeah i put podcast i don't put uh, some music i put podcast yeah like personally i i, I love to watch tom Bilyeu, mm -hmm. and he has so many crazy guests and everyone shares something so uh, important that there are so, so, so many people that we can just learn Long from time. them. Uh, just that it's, it's, uh, we just need, we just need to understand that uh, there are so much things which are scientific. The <laughs> same way, uh, recently one of the, the one of our uh, investors, uh, he gave me a course. And the name was something that after I saw that course name, I felt myself very stupid. The course name was The Art of Critical Decision Making. Mm -hmm. They saw the name, a professor is going to speak about decision making and the course is about 20 hours. And why I felt myself stupid? I would think you're already 30 plus and you never thought about learning how to make decisions. Because we do so many decisions every day and we do some critical decisions in our lives. Like, why don't we learn about the traps? There are, that even many presidents did, many wars were started because of these, these decisions or people who made decisions and now they are not where they want to be. Right. And I was like, oh, why I didn't start from there? And the same, it's, it's very similar. Why not to start to understand what makes the nature of humanity happy? Why not to start from there? Right. And then when you understand this stuff, it's already easier. The one, the day you want to become a better, this is the most important day because if you understand that, you will go and find out. You will go to YouTube, you will go to Google, you will, we will all find different motivational speakers or different people, different sources where we learn, but we will start to improve. So uh, I, I, I try to help my students here, yeah, but I always say to them, uh, I might, I might be one of the best coaches, but there are better, better speakers, better people who will scientifically teach you what you need to How learn. to, yeah, yeah, to learn happiness. That's true. Um, so, Avatik, I've taken a lot of your time here and thank you so much for sharing so much with our viewers. Uh, before I leave you, I'd like to ask you, what are your thoughts on um, chess? 
like what 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 is you know what is your vision of chess in general and also what do you think uh, is the future of armenian chess uh, now especially after uh, grandmaster aronian has decided to shift to the us well i think chess never have been so popular as now it of course had uh, maybe because it started was because of pandemic but then like lots of things started to happen many people started to make it online available lots of streams lots of online tournaments uh, many uh, comedians came to chess and together comedians and chess players they started to make a better content so now i think chess is booming uh, and hopefully it will continue this moment it will keep the momentum and growing uh, and there are really people who are pushing it forward there are of course people who are making many things for money but there are people who are pushing the stuff and bringing all the value um, about armenian chess it's, it's a big challenge for now for us now because uh, after becoming twice olympic champions and uh, world champion it was many many years ago already mm -hmm. last year we didn't have any successes and our kids also didn't win many many medals in world championships and now our union leaves so here we have a challenge but you know um, challenge is something that we always face yes the question is how do we accept the challenge and do we realize that this is a challenge or not because i think everything starts with the awareness if you are just, ah, it's nothing, it's just okay, you never try to fix the problem. The day you realize, okay, there is a problem, you think about how to fix it, then you start to have some actions and, and the rest. I, I really hope uh, we are, our federation is aware and together with all the power we have, we will start uh, something that it will not fix immediately, but during the year, step by step, we will bring back the famous Armenian chest. Yes, and we wish you all the best for that. Before I leave you, do you want uh, to thank anyone? Because you have been from a chess player to a trader to now the entrepreneur. And you had so many successes in your life. I'm sure you have a lot of people to thank uh, for your journey. So would you want to take some time and tell us yeah, about yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Uh, as I said, yeah, it's like I, I tell, I tell like on on loud i tell every night uh, people's name so the first first people are my family uh, because my parents gave me that that freedom uh, freedom to make choice do you want to play chess okay do your chess oh you want to retire okay retire oh you want coaching okay coach chess mode what do you want to invest the time oh mm, no investors you are giving is it scary uh, what, what how you do that uh, but they always okay do your way do your way if you if you are if you are wrong you do something uh mistake learn from your mistakes so i had that freedom and i had the very big support of my parents uh, without having lots of resources my parents managed to uh, take me to tournaments to the point when i started to cover my expenses so they are the first uh, people next of course now especially now is my wife who works with me and uh, shares with me her bright energy and together we are going uh, forward as I said I really can't imagine to go this through this all without her support and help uh, they are my friends who don't care when I say sorry I'm busy I cannot make it I'm working they understand it many people didn't understand it and said oh this is more important for you than us and so on so we lost the connection because this is what i'm trying to do now with chess mode is more than me it's more than many things it's bigger what i try what i what the vision i have it's much bigger so i had to make sacrifices and the real friends understand this yeah. and i'm very grateful for such friends and to the chess world and our chess mode students and the chess lover who supported me because during this a uh, few years we got so much support from our community people who even just clicking share button uh, clicking some buttons they also help I'm not speaking about people who are writing us and saying hey you have some issue with the marketing 
I can help you doing it better. I can just do it. I don't need any salary. Just I, let, let me to do that. And there are people who help us so much. And then the investors who joined us and said, let's take this bigger. Let's make your vision higher. So we, we continued there. So every, every day I'm remembering these people, uh, seeing their faces uh, before I sleep and when I wake up. And loudly I pronounce their name saying thank you. Uh, so I'm Thanks. really, really lucky to have all these people in my life and I really feel myself kind of lucky in this. This is so good. Thank you so much for sharing so much with us, Abhisik. Uh, just for the viewers, uh, this is not all we get of him because uh, he has very graciously invited me to visit his facility at Ch for chess mood in Yerevan. So when I'm there next week for the next tournament, he will be inviting me over there and we will go through his journey of chess mood. There's so much to learn for entrepreneurs who want to start something new. He has lots of things to share with us. So stay tuned everybody and thank you so much Avatik for your time. We'll see you again next week. Sure, I'm looking forward to seeing you at chess mood place because this is a place that uh, I was dreaming exactly about such a place three years ago. We didn't want to have office. We didn't have, uh, we didn't want to have a standard one, but something very, very different world, which is tough to imagine. So I'm not going to spoil the information <laughs> and I will take you there probably and show what kind of world we created at Chessmode because I believe that, uh, Whatever we do, we need to serve our clients with happiness because if we serve with happiness, people will feel that energy. Yes. And the people who will serve, they should be happy in order to serve that. So I try to create an atmosphere and a place where people just want to come here early, left late and kind of happy house. So wow. not spoiling any more information. I'm looking forward to inviting you there and seeing you there. Absolutely. Thank you so much and see you next week. Bye everyone. Bye bye dear chess world.